Testing, testing. To OK? Slyšíš mě? Jo? Jo? Jo, jo, testing. Ready? Yep. Super dík. Budu na YouTube. Jo, jsem se koukal. Ale je tam jenom zvuk a prezentace. Na některých je toho víc, ale tady jenom. Já jsem připojený tam. Tak. tak mě můžeš nahradit, a to bylo nabíte, já jsem to zapravdal. Ale je to krátké. Jedině, že by se připojil do mého kompu. To bys mohla. Welcome everyone. Please attention. Uh, here's some free posters. So if you want, you can grab one. Um, please, when you uh, come during the uh, presentation, please close the door as quietly as possible. Um, when you want to elevate uh, decisions, you can visit this uh, link and please tweet about the conference and write the blog posts. And now, please welcome new presenter Miroslav Greper with uh, SE Linux Nowadays. Nowadays talk. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. So, welcome everybody. Uh, nice day today. So. It's great to see you are interested, so interested in SE Linux. It's, it's a really good start point. So my name is Miroslav Greppel. I'm charged in SE Linux four years, seven years and, and, and others. And the last year we introduced three big usability improvements in SE Linux tool, tooling from upstream in Fedora 23. And I will describe them in the first today's topic. In the second topic, I will tell you who is behind these changes at the Red Hat. And then you will get answers, uh, I would say, on the most popular questions related to SC Linux. What can SC Linux do for me, do for you? And before a discussion and before a summary, 
we will, I will tell you what is coming this year, what we are doing to do for you in SC Linux. And then summary and discussion. So, ready? So let's start. The first big improvements. We introduced big performance gains. Do you remember if you recently, uh, if you previously tried to install the policy or if you tried to disable or enable a policy for a service, for example, for example, for the Docker, it took your time, it took my time, and you were waiting and waiting and waiting. Is there Lukash? Rabek? Lukash, do you remember? Yeah. yeah, I do. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So you had approximately 15 seconds for these guys, for these words. And I don't, to be honest, I don't know how to spell it. I'm not Bostonian. Uh, I like this guy who is traveling for Super Bowl right now. And also, I really like this picture. But, sorry man, sorry Dan, but uh, I like this picture much more. <laughs> you can see, if you previously installed the policy, it took 20 seconds. If the currently, if right now, try, you try to install the policy, it, too, it takes five, six seconds. And the same, I'm then wash, and I wanted previously tried to disable Docker policy, so it took 20 seconds. But currently, right now, it takes five seconds, and the same if you wanted to back to enable the policy. Do you like it? I like it. I really, it's, it's, it's really huge. So we introduced a 75 percent speed up of tools that perform SC Linux policy management. It's huge, really huge. Is it true? <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks. Come on. Thanks. Of course. Uh, so, uh, the oh, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And 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 thank you for. <laughs> it's it's the last day. So thank you for your questions. If you if you can trust me. Thank you, really thanks. Oh. <laughs> you, you know, it's, it's a rawhide, yeah? <laughs> so, some bugs in system D. Okay, so. Counting, counting, hopefully you can trust me. It's, it's here. Oh, do you trust me? <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay, so the second, the second big improvement. We introduce a new way, a new, a really easy way how to shift your own policy, your own version policy for your service, for your product, and so on. So let's go again with Docker. I am Dan Walsh. I deployed the Docker policy. I installed the policy. And right now, what happened? I failed. I failed. There was the following error. There was a duplicate error. There was a conflict. Why? Do you know? OK. These guys know. Uh, because the Docker policy was also shipped by the distribution policy. But 
with the new SLinux tooling, no more errors, no more fails. You don't care about the distribution. You don't care about the distribution policy. And we make them all happy. So to be happy. So there is an example. If the if the current if the currently install the Docker, you will see something like this. You can see there is a Docker policy shipped by the distribution policy, so it's a Docker distribution policy. This policy has 100 priority, and in the same time, you will see, you can see Docker policy, my own Docker policy, which has 400 priority. So, and surprisingly, maybe not, higher priority wins. So my own Docker policy is, is used in the distribution and overrides the distribution policy. Yes? Yeah, yeah, it's, it can be different, yeah? It's a, right now, 100 uh, priority is a default priority uh, for distribution modules, and 400, you can change it. You can, uh, you can have 200 priority, it's, it's, it can be changed, yeah. So, and we, and then, is we are happy with that solution. So, we have a, so we have a ability assign priorities to modules. So, the first big improvement. With the new SLinux tooling, we introduce new common intermediate language called SIL. There is, I have a, I have a story to, for this topic. Uh, sometimes ago, uh, we needed to create a local policy for a SLinux sandbox tool to make this tool working because there were some, there were some kernel changes, let's say, no, no, not issues, not bugs, but changes. So, I created my sandbox.t file. Here you can see the example. It's written in M4 macro language. And right now, uh, the fun started. I needed, I needed to compile this file to create my sandbox.pp file. It's a uh, it's a compiled policy module. We called it uh, as a, a high-level language, high-level language, high-level language with, which is not readable. There is no easy way, because it's compiled, there is no easy way how, how, how to read it, yeah? And after that, we needed to recompile this compiled module to create binary policy, and this binary policy was loaded to the kernel. So kernel uh, could enforce this policy. So it's, it's really complicated. And right now, right now you know why it, why it took 20 seconds. Yeah? It's too many steps. Do you like it? <laughs> Me too, yeah. Even more, I don't know how to write this, these rules. So there is a picture for these steps. You can see we have source files, we compile them to .pp through intermediate files, and after that, this policy compiled policy module, we recompiled to binary policy, and this binary policy is loaded to the kernel. So, I don't like it. Uh, with, with SIL, it's much more easier. It's, it's like a dream for me. <laughs> yeah? So I can just write, I, I create my sandbox.sil file. I can just write one line, one line, no compiling, 
and just I load it using SC module tool. So it's it's really awesome. Yeah, it's it's amazing for me, probably for you, and uh, so and more. This is a intermediate language, and this language is human. It's human readable for me, probably for you. <laughs> it will be better, <laughs> but it's much more better than uh, M4 language in the previous example. So we have a readable intermediate policy language, and we have a, we have a ability, we have a potential for a new high-level language, for a new high-level language which is readable against .pp, which is not re readable. I have an example for you. There is a high-level language called LOL policy from Joshua Brindle. And you, uh, there is an example of, of the policy. I, I am a log watch, and I want to, I want to read web server logs. Yeah? Is it, it's human readable? Do you understand it? Yeah, it's it's much more it's much more better. Yeah, it's it's there is a big opportunity for a new high level language. I like it. It's it's like a ring. Yeah, so we can write a new high level language, for example, in JavaScript or something like that. So so it so it's here. It's important. It's here. It's Fedora 23. So feel free to test it. Feel free to run SC module dash B and test it. So the question is, who is behind these changes at the Red Hat? So me, currently working on a team lead and policy stuff and stuff like that. Uh, I will mention some guys. Please, guys, put your hands up if you are here. Yeah. Paul working on kernel. Where is Paul? Yeah. This guy. Petr working on mainly user space. Here is. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I would say a new policy guy. My replacement. Lukash is. Ah, oh, nice. Also, the team is here. <laughs> Reed is our intern. We currently is working on policy analyze tool. I will talk about it later in this presentation. With and Milos, it's our QE guy at the Red Hat. Milos, thank, thank you for your talk about SLinux troubleshooting. It was really great. Okay, so it was a SLinux team at the Red Hat. Nice faces, right? <laughs> Smiling. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so right now you will get hopefully your, uh, your answers. What SLNews can do for me? What SLNews can do for you? SLNews protects your system for consequences of exploited applications, of exploited your favorite applications. Give me some examples. What is your favorite? apps, SSD, systemd, stuff like that. I like sudo. And maybe, maybe you know, there was a security issue in sudo, this one, uh, when under certain conditions, you were able to access any file on your system. So for example, you were able to access Etsy shadow file. And what is the question? The question is, was your, was my system protected? This system wasn't protected. Definitely wasn't. You can see we were able to access Etsy shadow file. So we were able to see our secrets. As a consequence, as a consequences, as a consequence of the sudo exploit. Fortunately, fortunately, my system, and probably also your systems, 
my system was protected before that attack. And why? Because I have SC Linux turned on. And I have SC Linux in enforcing mode. It's correct? It's true? Let's check. Ah, it's true. You can see in enforcing mode. So as a result, sudo process was successfully isolated by SC Linux. So what next? SC Linux protects your virtual machines. Again, there was a security issue called Venom. Do you know about it? Yeah? Yeah. You mentioned it. Yeah. Joshua also mentioned it yesterday. Josh mentioned it yesterday. And, uh, uh, and the question, again, the same questions. Is my system protected? Are my virtual machine protected before that exploit? With SCLinux, yes. If you have SCLinux with libvirt, you, you get your virtual machines isolated by SCLinux using categories. So each virtual machine has own category, has own unique category. So if there is an exploit, if there is an exploit in a virtual machine, your hosting system is protected because your virtual machine is isolated by SC Linux. And even more, your other virtual machines are also protected because they are also, they are isolated, yeah? So it's, it's called s -word. Okay, what next? SC Linux keeps your container in its own space. Yeah. Containers are everywhere. You may, maybe you know containers don't contain. Yeah, correct, thank you. So what SC Linux does with containers? It's the, no magic, it's the, it's the same as we have with s -word. We can have thousands of containers, thousands and thousands of containers, and each container is isolated in the same way as s -word. So each container has own unique category. That's whole story. It's the same as we have for virtual machines. Still the same. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, easy answer. Uh, I'm talking about about isolation outside containers. Yeah. So yeah, it's a it's a future. Now, no. no I, look on this guy. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were talking about that on the party and even a lot of beers. No, no, there is no chance in, inside containers. So, okay. So, I've been talking about 1,000 containers. So, SCLinux brings advanced security for multi-tenant environments. What is specific for these environments? We can have thousands and thousands of processes, and we want to isolate them from each other to prevent consequences of possible exploits. So give me some example of uh, multi-tenant environments. I will. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Thanks. OK, open shifts. So in open shift, in older version of OpenSheet, uh, we have gears isolated in the same way as, con as, as, weird, as I described ab above for 
virtual machines for containers. In op OpenShift version 3, containers are in the game. So right now, you know, we have isolated containers in OpenShift 3. OK, so stand up. Please, please, come on, please. Please, come on, please. It's morning, almost lunch. Okay, yeah, thank you, thank you. And let's start. Security. Security. Wind. Wind. Wheat. SE Linux. Thank you. Okay. So what, what we are going, what is coming this year? What uh, we are going to do for you this year? Uh, excuse me. Okay. Uh, we, we, our the biggest our the biggest goal is uh, we called it a new SC Linux on Atomic. SC Atomic. Uh, uh, what 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 we would like to achieve? What we would like to address with SC Atomic? We would like to have a support for factory reset. With the new SLNUX tooling, we have distribution defaults. It means we have uh, default policy modules in warlib SLNUX direct directory. Also together with your customizations. What does it mean if we talk about factory reset? Uh, if the idea is that uh, slash var is empty, if there is a factory reset, so our customizations are gone. It's okay, but we also we also have distribution defaults in the directory. So it means our def distribution defaults will end, will 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 lose, and we lose them currently. So the idea is to split these distribution defaults and these customizations. So we can, so we can leave your customizations in Warlib as Linux and move distribution defaults to read-only directory. So for example, user lib as Linux. And with that, with that, the idea of factory reset on atomic hosts will work. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about it with Colin, so some additional fixes will be needed on atomic, but this this idea. So what is the what is the next goal? What is the second goal with SC Atomic? We would like to provide a policy reflecting reflecting atomic host requirements. So from our, from our point of view, from SLNUX point of view, atomic hosts are about containers and are about services around containers. There is no need, really no need, to have a, a, such a huge policy which we currently have. Yeah? It's, it's targeted policy. I called it workstation policy. Some numbers. In this policy, we have, we have thousands types, thousands types for, for uh, your services. We have over 100 low rules for your services. So it's, it's so huge, it's so complicated, and really no need to have this policy on atomic goals. So 
we would like to bring a new concept, a policy, written from the scratch, totally from the scratch. New ideas. I called it lightweight policy, where we would bring a big reduction of, of types from thousands to tens. We can start with, with, with five, ten uh, process types. Yeah? So, ten process types against thousands. Do you see it? Yeah? It's, it's really huge. And the same for, for the rules. We will, we will bring a red reduction of these rules from tens of thousands thou to thousands, I would say, maybe to hundreds, only to hundreds, because containers. Yeah? So, we would also bring simplified and understandable policy for you. Really, really easy policy. I, uh, and as a consequence of these changes, we would introduce significant speed up, additional significant speed up of tools that perform a Linux policy management. Uh, I think we, we could talk about, about almost 100 percentage speed up of these tools. Yeah, so it would be really quick. It would be really fast. And it's coming. Okay, the, the next goal, the, our next goal for Reserve is SLinux troubleshooting. We would like to bring, okay. Have you, have you ever seen the picture like this? Put your hands up. If, yeah, yeah, thank you. So, Sometimes, if you are doing a Linux troubleshooting, SE alert gives you multiply cho choices, yeah? And the question is, how do you know what is the best solution? How do you know what you are, what are supposed to do? Yeah, is, is the correct question? Yeah? I think so. It's, it is. So we would like to bring improvements and uh, provide you, and provide you easy, really easy solution, easy, clever solution for you, for for you, for your policy issues, and even more, we would like to integrate this Linux troubleshooting with cockpit. Steph Walters were talking about it yesterday, so it's happening right now. It's coming really, really soon. Okay, and the, the last goal in this presentation is SLinux policy analysis tool. Excuse me. I, was men I mentioned it at the beginning. Uh, what is the story about this tool as a user or as a developer? I, I would like to have a <coughs> a human readable big picture of the policy on my system. I would like to, to see what, for example, Firefox plugins can do on my system from the policy perspective. Yeah? So we would like to introduce picture like this. I apologize, it's a preview of preview of preview of preview. <laughs> So we could, uh, we could uh, see flows. We could see if uh, Firefox plugins can access its Etsy shadow file, for example. So we could see if we, if we add some changes, if there is a change in the flow, if there is a security issue introduced by us or introduced by applications. So. Uh, so we would, uh, we will get uh, a tool for SLinux policy integrity testing. So, do you like it? Yeah, yeah. It's it's really nice. It's really nice. And these guys, we is working on it. So, keep going. Good work. Okay. So, 
summary. Right now, you know we reach 75 percentage speed up of tools that performs SLUX policy management. You know we have an easy way how to ship own version of policy for your product, for your service. The next one. We know there is a new intermediate policy language called SIL. We know, we, we know SLinux helps mitigate, helps mitigate consequences of exploits. We know new SLinux, new SLinux for atomic hosts known as SE Atomic is coming soon. Together with new troubleshooting and together with a new SLinux analysis tool for visually, could you help me? Ah, thank you. <laughs> okay, so it was summary. It's, it's coming. So thank you, and this... Please contact, contact me with questions, and let's, let's ask if you have questions. Yeah? So the question is uh, how we will uh, how we will provide additional security with SE Atomic about uh, which I was talking, for example, for sudo. But the key point is on containers uh, on Atomic hosts we care about containers. Of course, uh, there there will be there will be probably a set of. Uh, Base services like SSD, systemd with own policy. Yeah? So there will be a policy for core services. Yeah? Okay, thank you. Good for you. Okay, next one. So if I, understand, if I understand correctly, you, uh, you are asking about how, con uh, how SLINUX will help with containers on, uh, on, a or on the share volume, yeah? It's a, uh, mm, just thinking, uh, what, was the question? what was the question? How, how SLINUX will help uh, will have uh, with containers on shared volumes. So uh, it's the, is there an open issue or is a, it's a. I was asking that, so basically if I take a container and I, I mount a shared volume, let's say I'm a container, I'm writing something. Other containers also get the same volume. Yeah, yeah. So try to modify some files. It should not do because I am the one who is writing some content on that. So is there something? If it's a shared, of course, if it is a shared volume, it's a, this volume is a readable by, by another containers, yeah, because, because it's shared volume, yeah. yeah. So if, if, if there is a rule for it, we all use it. Yeah, it does also, yeah, but it's, but, yeah, it's, yeah, correct. 
So yes, it, if it's the if the label is the same, which is for for the shared volume, I guess. So and if there is a rule allowing it, it, it will be allowed. So it's a it's a let's talk about it. Yeah, after that. Yeah, thank you. And another question. Is there a limit? <laughs> Paul is saying. There's sort of a limit of, for any, for any given system instance, um, it's a 30 qubit integer inside the kernel, so you can't have more than what, 4.2 million unique labeled, SE labeled on the system for any given um, we've, we've talked about, you know, how you lift for it. Thanks, Paul. Any other questions? Yeah? Are you going to back off the speed improvement in Kernel 6? No. Kernel 7. Yeah, we will see. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a huge change. Yeah, but good questions. But Kernel 6, no. It's, it's uh, no. <laughs> I will give you. There is a gift for you. Okay, so we are out of time, so feel free to catch me if you have additional questions or other SNOs guys. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I need to just... Radši, já tam mám nějaký spelling issue, já ti to uložím, ale je možné to pak nějak dodatečně poslat někomu, nebo... Poši to Honzovi Blehovi. Jo, já to uložím ti určitě, jo, ať to máš tady. Jo, jo, jasný, jasný. Je. Summary page? Yeah, uh, you can mean, I take it, a shot of it, or can you publish it? It will be published, yeah. Publish? It, yeah, at devconv.cz. Uh, yeah, okay, thank yeah. You. it will be available. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just uh, will give. Yeah, yeah. yeah. let's.